the beautiful landscape and rich culture of the Philippines. A country made up of thousands of islands nestled in Southeast Asia. But in the hustle and bustle of everyday life and the fight for survival is a humble and happy people with incredible stories of hope. Always no water, but now we have motor. No wonder they're so happy. Stories of courage. I just felt the desire. It's very strong. And he loves you. And stories of coming together as one. It's very amazing how music can actually make us feel closer to one another. It's almost like music is a beeline to the divine. It made him realize that we are really brothers and sisters. I am just grateful that God enabled me to be of service to these people. Are miracles happening here? Miracles are happening. You don't even have to say it. There are almost a million Latter-day Saints who live in Philippines, and it's happened in just 63 years. Being called as a missionary is something I've always dreamed of as a younger kid, and so to be here right now is an honor. There's something quite remarkable about the people of the Philippines. The faith, the resilience, the optimism unmatched. About two and a half hours outside of Manila, in the heart of Tarlac City, is San Sebastian Elementary School, where every day, meals are made for more than 120 kids in need of food. Uh, we are feeding here with more than 120 learners. Dr. Christian Quinton is a school's principal. And if you didn't have this food, what would you do? No, nothing, nothing. These children will just be going home with empty stomach. Something Dr. Quinton doesn't even want to think about. When children are having this empty stomach, they cannot really, really learn. They cannot comprehend or even they cannot hear the instruction of their teachers. All this food these kids are eating comes from another part of town at this 25-acre farm, where every day dozens of farmers pick a variety of produce for thousands of hungry children. There's also chickens and goats for protein. They call it the Rise and Rebuild Foundation. The foundation runs four different farms in the Philippines, employing more than 250 farmers. Each farm raises enough produce for about 24 different schools. So these are the schools. Uh, we are given vegetables too. The open and close parentheses are the numbers of children being fed. Trixie Espinoza is a director of farming for the organization. And Trixie's husband, Richard, is a director of self-reliance for the foundation. Both felt they were guided to work here. I felt this is what our Heavenly Father wants me to do. For Richard, it became very personal. Emotionally, very hard for me. He knows exactly what it's like to go without food. At just five years old, his parents separated and left him and his brothers to beg for food on the streets. Sadly, he lost both of his brothers because of it. My life is hopeless. It's like I will, uh, I will just die in this slum, just like what happened to my two brothers. He, he is the lucky one. Yeah. Richard says his life forever changed when he met with missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and turned his life over to Christ. When we follow him, when we believe in him, he will turn you into something miraculous. Is that what he's done with your life? Yeah. He turned me into something miraculous. At 27, he became a bishop, a stake president at 36, and a mission president along with his wife at 42. I, I never imagined uh, my life to become like this. I think because of the gospel, uh, he taught me to dream. He taught me to hope. 
and he taught me to have faith in him, uh, follow him, and he will provide. That's my motto in life. But the Espinosas say they also owe their life-changing experience. This is this morning's harvest of beans. To 86-year-old Ray Goodson and his wife, Debbie, the connection. who happened to live in Sandy, Utah. Our love for the people has not ever changed. They are the founders of Rise and Rebuild. You hungry? We okay. love them and admire them and are constantly amazed with what they do with so little. It's um, life-changing for us. You're still eating. It was June of 1961 when Ray was called as the very first missionary of the Philippines. He had just finished a three-year mission to Hong Kong, had his bags packed, and was ready to go home when President Gordon B. Hinckley extended his mission several more months and called him to the Philippines. So I called my parents and said, I won't be home yet. Ray fell in love with the people and the country. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. I had been laboring in Hong Kong for three years with little or, you know, very little success. And then we come down here and no matter who we talk to, they're willing to listen. About 13 years later, when Ray was just 35 years old, he and Debbie were called as mission leaders in the Philippines, taking along with them their five young children. It was a call and we felt it. We really felt that call. They returned again in 2013 to try and help the Filipinos rebuild from the deadly and destructive typhoon Yolanda. The Goodsons invited many of their missionaries to return to the country to help rebuild homes, bathrooms, and restore water. From that, they created the Rise and Rebuild Foundation. Last year, Rise and Rebuild fed more than 20,000 kids. This year, they're hoping for over 25,000. Their ultimate goal, over 100,000 kids fed every year. Yay! Principal Quinton says he can't imagine life without the program. Full stomachs means happy and productive kids. There is a very, very huge impact of this program to our school. Our absenteeism is now becoming very, very low. Plus, there is a huge impact in their academic performances. Thank you, thank you so much, thank you so much. Rise and be good. Just across the street from the Manila Temple is a Philippines Missionary Training Center. Damo mga bintana. What does it mean? Damo mga bintana. Curtains. A place where young men and young women <laughs> come from all across the world to be taught. What language are you learning? Hiligaynon. And then sent to a variety of countries. Ano nga ba ang mga words na ito in Japanese? Not just the Philippines. Faith wa nihongo de in Japanese. That's why 13 different languages are taught here. Shinko. Shinko. Moi kai, moi kai. Being called as a missionary is something that I've always dreamed of as a younger kid. I realized how happy the gospel makes me and I really wanted to share that happiness with all of the Lord's children. Today, more than 40 years later, a huge campus, seven buildings, 35 classrooms, and a capacity to handle 320 missionaries. How's breakfast? President David De Lamar and his wife Kayla, who are from Lehigh, Utah, preside over the MTC. <laughs> they have been here for just over a year. What we see here is dedicated, hardworking missionaries that love the gospel. My love for this country started back in 1975. I was a missionary here. Turns out Ray Goodson, the founder of Rise and Rebuild, was David's mission president. There were only two missions at that time. And now, of course, there's 23 missions, and it will be 26 missions starting on July 1st. Your reaction to the growth? It's just phenomenal. Included in that very first batch of missionaries to this MTC back in 1983, I felt the spirit every day. Was 60-year-old Rodrigo Asuro. We caught up with him and his family at the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square's Interfaith Concert at a historic Catholic university in Manila.
The choir came to the Philippines as part of its second stop of its World Hope Tour. The very first time the choir has ever been to this country. It's my mom's favorite team. For the Asuro family, it's a sign of the incredible growth the church has had in the Philippines. I think it's a miracle happening in the Philippines now. Rodrigo also considers his own life a miracle. He says it all started when he decided to serve a mission. One day, I just felt the desire, very strong, that I need to go on a mission. The mission changed me, and I will not have this family as I have now without my mission. Asuro and his wife, Carmela, the gospel had made me what I am today. Have five children who have all served missions and still make the gospel a priority in their life. Everything I do, it's, it revolves around the gospel. I am a child of God and you know, my purpose here is not just to play around. I'm just happy to be part of this church, just seeing the growth. The growth of the church in the Philippines and the Filipino love for the choir are the reasons why the choir chose to come here. There are almost a million Latter-day Saints who live in Philippines, and it's happened in just 63 years. The choir held four concerts. The first, at the grand ballroom of a hotel with an intimate group of dignitaries, government, and business leaders. I feel like I'm somewhere else, happy and with a very light feeling. This is a once in a lifetime experience. The second was an interfaith concert. Their voices really touched our hearts and lifted our spirits. We were really awed by their great and amazing performance. The music itself expresses uh, the hope that uh, we need in order to survive in this world. So I think it gives really hope for all of us, you know, that all of us could be one you know, with, with one another. The last two concerts were held at the 9,000 seat arena at the Mall of Asia. Broadway star and actress Leia Salonga, who was born and raised in the Philippines, was a featured guest artist. It's almost like music is a beeline to the divine. And I think every person of faith recognizes that. The lineup also included Isabel Cuevas, a very popular Filipino social media influencer with millions of followers. I know that the choir is already global, um, but reaching the younger audience is definitely so important. But this message of hope is one that went far beyond the thousands in this arena. There will be millions who will actually consume this performance on a streamed signal. The significance of having the choir here in the Philippines is almost as a new chapter for the church. Beautiful! <laughs> you love it! About five hours outside of Manila, is the province of Zambales, where traffic is constantly on the go. But off the beaten path and up a dirt road is a step back in time, a small indigenous village full of friendly, humble people. In English, this little village is called the Promised Land. About 800 people live here, many of them farmers. This is the home of Lester de la Cruz's family, a family of five, living in humble circumstances, yet grateful for God's bounteous blessings. <laughs> he was recently baptized a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Jesus Christ is so good to us 
Before, my family, we always fight. But now, because we know Jesus Christ, we have peaceful life. Lester is a farmer, just like most of the people who live here in this village. The farms are tucked high on the mountain and are not close by. Many use motorcycles or walk to get to their farms. This right here is a very popular form of travel. We've got the motorcycle driver there, and we're sitting on a cart heading to a farm. Being a farmer can be long, hot days and a lot of demanding work for little pay. It's very difficult to be a farmer. It's like gambling. We don't know if we will win or not. It's really a hard work. But for Lester and thousands of other farmers in this area, help has come in a big way. We are very thankful. Po. Thanks to Elvin Lacetta and his Rice Up Farming Organization that teaches farmers critical skills. We learn how to budget our time, our effort. So they can significantly increase their income. Their income ranges from 70 to $75 a month. And after they become part of the program, they earn 250 to $300 a month. Because of our training and loan program, Lester was able to pay off his motorcycle. <laughs> Rise Up is designed to empower farmers to be the best version of themselves and be lifted up out of poverty. 29-year-old Elvin, who was born and raised in the Philippines, attended BYU Hawaii, where he entered a Great Ideas competition and came up with the Rice Up program. He won first place. He used the prize money to put the program into practice. I'm a graduate, I'm absent. His inspiration <laughs> behind it all? His grandfather, who was a hard-working farmer and fisherman. He taught me that I can fight for the rights of the farmers in various ways, helping the farmers have a voice and enable them to see that there is hope. In the seven years since Elvin started the program, he has helped 3,000 farmers. All we spoke with say it has changed their life for the better. To improve our livelihood and make uh, use of this uh, fund for business. We gain more money for our family and because we have four children. It is strengthening our attitude. It's different now. My family is happy. Now I have money that I can save so that I can use it in the future. In the fight for survival in Zambales, farmers used to be forgotten, but all that is now changing, thanks to one man's dream. I feel it is my mission, it is my vocation to help people to get out of poverty through agriculture development. I am just grateful that God enabled me to be of service to these people. Behind these city walls, a huge celebration. A small village on the outskirts of Manila with hundreds of joyous residents parading and dancing around the complex, grateful for something most of us take for granted. Water. After years without access, they finally have it again. Oh, it's good. We have already a water every day in the morning, at night. Well, the greatest thing is these beautiful children. That's why they are celebrating the arrival of Elder Neil L. Anderson from the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. This is the Filipino way of saying thanks. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints worked alongside the Catholic community to build three new water tanks on top of the apartments. The previous tanks were rusted, old, and couldn't hold water. We are on the eighth floor of the building. Bernabe Mixino's company built and replaced the new tanks. So it, you could only fill the tank how high? About one third, maybe up to here only. The tanks now hold 7,500 gallons of water between the three of them. It is fantastic. This project, we show our love to our neighborhood, no matter what religion they are in. Elder Anderson, standing side by side with other religious leaders, cut the ribbon 
and ceremoniously turned on the faucet. 1,200 families now have running water. Instead of having to load up water and carry it up to the third or fourth level or fifth level, water will come out of their faucets. No wonder they're so happy. Well, I'm very overwhelmed and grateful, of course. Sorry, uh, because um, I've been here for 10 years and I know how difficult it is for them. Always no water, but now we have motor. That means Virginia will no longer have to carry those heavy water jugs, all those flights of stairs to her seventh floor apartment. It's very good. It's plenty of water. This is huge. For Elder and Sister Huff, who are humanitarian missionaries here, this is two years in the making. This is a miracle. There were so many obstacles we had to overcome to make this happen. The faith, the resilience, the optimism, unmatched. Truly a country of beauty and rich in culture. But this is what makes this country so amazing. The resilient, loving people. Helping one another to press on. We are helping those kids who are like me before. And keep the faith. It's much bigger than the choir and much bigger than us. One of the beauties of this country is that almost everyone has faith and they're not afraid to talk about it. This is the happiness that we feel together. Yeah, I am so happy. <laughs> and that says to me, the Lord is preparing great things for this country.